Hello. Thank you everyone for joining me on a very late night stream. I am not used to streaming at 11.45 at night, or at least starting at 11.45 at night. But uh, yeah, today was CinemaCon 2024, day three. How is everybody doing? Uh, we have a lot to get into, so I will go ahead and get started. Let me just make sure everything's good on my end. No, hopefully no technical difficulties like last night. Uh, Super Chat should be up and running on Stream Element. And hopefully, uh, hopefully no freezes, because that is stressful. But yeah, thanks to everyone for coming to a late night stream. Uh, we'll go ahead and start off with Lionsgate. Uh, Lionsgate was this morning. They had a like stuffed, like jam-packed presentation. It was really, really fun. But they had so many films that they covered. I could not believe it when they went over their slate. It was just like movie after movie after movie. Uh, they started off with a 2023 highlight reel. It showed off a bunch of their successful films from 2023, including John Wick, Saw X, Hunger Games, Imaginary, and then it led into uh, a little glimpse of some of their upcoming films, including The Strangers, uh, Part One, The Crow, and Borderlands, which, oh, I can't wait to talk about Borderlands. Uh, and then they briefly, briefly talked about a couple other upcoming projects, uh, including Highlander. Now You See Me 3, which is interesting because um, I, I really enjoyed the first two, or at least the first one I, I really, really enjoyed. The second one, I don't remember that well. And then now they're doing a third one and they are bringing back, they said, uh, the original cast. So that's that's pretty fun to hear that announcement. And then something I am very, very excited for, they mentioned that they are going to be doing The Blair Witch with Jason Blum, and I cannot wait to see what Blumhouse does with the Blair Witch Project franchise. They also mentioned something really interesting. I didn't know about this. I knew Margot Robbie, who just did Barbie, obviously, was working on a Sims movie, but they also announced they are working with Margot Robbie to do a Monopoly movie. So it's crazy. It's crazy all these... uh. Movies we're getting based on video or board games, toys, stuff like that. Uh, so they started off with something that's about to come out on April 19th. So what, nine days from now? The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Uh, looks looks really good, action-packed, uh, but that trailer's been out. It's about to release, so they just briefly touched on it. It's an untold true story. And uh, they brought out Henry Cavill, which was very exciting to talk about that Guy Ritchie film. And then he also has a second Guy Ritchie film, uh, the two of them together, called In the Gray. And that's cool that they have two films coming out uh, together as a collaboration. And it was funny because he was talking about his facial hair, how he has different facial hair in the two different movies. And it was funny because Henry Cavill made a joke about how one time he had a very controversial mustache. And he was joking about how um, the training of the mustache was just as difficult and intensive as the training, like physical training for the film. And they asked him, what is it about Guy Ritchie that people enjoy working with him again and again and again? And he said that Guy creates a wonderful work environment full of uh, creativity. And he said, everyone says this, but he truly means it, that it's like family working with Guy Ritchie in these films. So that was really cool to hear. He said that they've developed a shorthand and uh, that there's a freedom of friendship. So very exciting. And um, he talked a little bit about Highlander, which I'm very excited. He was talking about how he's a lover of the original movies. So I cannot wait to see when they finally show us about that. Then there was a announcement of a movie called Unsung Hero, which will be out on April 20th. It's from King and... Once again, I wrote these notes in the dark. So I think it says King and Country Films. Uh, let me just close this really quick. Okay. We are good. I forgot to put my computer on. Do not disturb. Oops. Then they transitioned into The Strangers Chapter 1, which is coming out on May 17th. I am very, very excited for this. I'm a huge fan of the original Strangers. And the second one, I know not as many people enjoy it, but there are some really fun scenes, including that pool scene that I am obsessed with. So to hear that they're coming back, doing a trilogy, and 
from what I understand, releasing all three films this year theatrically in 2024, I am very much looking forward to seeing what they do. They were talking about how this film is going to kind of show what led to them being the way that they are. And it showed some new footage, because I know the trailer's out, but there's some new footage that we saw today, and it was cut with some some lines just saying they don't need a reason. Uh, there was a very crazy scene where one of the actors is crawling on the floor to sneak away, and her hand goes right through a nail. Whew. And uh, then they brought out the strangers on stage. It was funny, because the, the theater was completely pitch black to show the screen, with the footage and when the lights turned on the three scare actors were on stage with the masks on and it was really fun because after the panel when i was leaving with ray we actually got a selfie with the the strangers so if you go on my instagram or on my twitter ray and i got a picture with the strangers in their masks that was very fun so then we move on to something that i am very very much looking forward to borderlands this comes out on august 9th there was a recorded video that was hilarious and it featured jack black Jamie Lee Curtis, Kate Blanchett, and Kevin Hart, who none of them were able to make it. But the video they did was really, really funny. And just based on this little video that they did, if that's the kind of chemistry we can expect and the kind of banter back and forth that we can expect, I think that's going to be really fun. And uh, it was really funny because it was mainly focused on Jamie Lee Curtis and everyone else together. Just, it was, it was really funny. They mentioned how the film was made in Budapest, which I thought was really interesting. I don't think I knew that before today. And they showed us an extended clip. Uh, I am so hyped for this movie. I, yeah, I love the games. I love this cast. Jack Black, Jamie Lee Curtis, Kate Blanchett. Like, how can you not be excited for this lineup, this game? So fun. It was just showing uh, their mission of trying to find the treasure, which is in the vault. And it just looks very colorful, very action heavy, very funny. And just, yeah, the banter back and forth. Jack Black as Claptrap, I think is hilarious. There's a scene where Ariana Greenblatt, she says, there's like a little flower growing. And she says, oh, look, like hope can bloom wherever. And then Claptrap, who was opening a door for them, jumps down and squishes it. And then he's dancing, saying how good of a job he did. And as he's dancing, he's squishing the flower. I thought that was a great scene. And, uh... I cannot wait. I wish they showed more. But after that, they brought out Eli Roth, who is the writer and the director of the film, and Ariana Greenblatt. And uh, she's winning an award tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow's already the last day. That is crazy to me that it's the final day tomorrow. But the two of them came out, and it was really sweet because everyone has been talking about how talented Ariana Greenblatt is. She was in Barbie, and now she's in this, and... It's just, it's it's crazy to see her talent. And you could just tell when she walked on the stage too, she was just like electrifying and she commanded attention. She's 16 years old. And when she was cast in this film, she was 13 years old. That's crazy to me. Eli Roth talked about how making movies is a faith-based system. And he mentioned some of his um, inspirations for this film, like The Fifth Element, Mad Max, Star Wars. So I love all those movies. Cannot wait to see this. He was also talking about how he's also a huge fan of the games and how he had so much fun making the movie. And yeah, he, he was talking about once he got Kate Blanchett on board, how easy it was to get the rest of the cast to sign on. And I thought it was funny because uh, he, was he was talking about how like he thought he was going to have to like pitch Kate. And basically all he said was like, oh, you'll get a flamethrower. And she was like, yep, let's do it. And she was like very on board and she's very excited for this film. So I can't wait. And uh, Jose, thank you for joining. How are you doing? Thanks for joining me. It's almost midnight where I am. Uh, but I wanted to make sure I got a stream in because whew, it's been a long day. But I really, last night I had a lot of fun talking with everyone. And uh, for those of you that are not watching this live, I appreciate you guys watching it after the fact because I know... 11.55 on a Wednesday is, is rough, but it's fun. It's fun doing these streams and just recapping everything. And what's special to me is uh, David, my boyfriend, is over there in the corner. And I haven't seen him all day because I've been at the convention all day. I know. I miss you. Uh, so as I'm telling you guys and recapping everything for you guys on the live stream, I'm also telling David. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. And my puppy, June, she's laying down and listening. So Eli Roth was asked about Ariana Greenblatt and what it is that he was looking forward to with working with her and what made her so special and he said every so often his team meets someone 
who says we need in our lives for as long as possible and he was talking about her and she almost she almost started crying like she you could tell it meant a lot to her and she was talking about how she can't believe the people that are in this movie and that she gets to work with Eli Roth and then it was funny because she was saying she feels like um because of this movie she has like aunts and uncles and grandmas like because she's made a family with everyone and she just was talking about how fortunate and lucky she is that people believe in her and her artistry so i think she is going to go very far and i'm excited to see her receive her award tomorrow night uh let's see she was nervous she said she purposely didn't wear her glasses so she wouldn't have to look out and see the audience you could tell she was nervous a little bit of stage fright but she was very sweet and uh yeah, she said it, it blew her mind. Uh, and every time she like looks at the poster or thinks about the movie, she can't believe the people she got to work with. And that it was uh, the craziest group of people, but somehow everyone meshed together perfectly. So I thought that was really fun. Um, I'm trying to see what I wrote here. You know what's funny? So I, I write my notes in the Pitch Black Theater, right? And then earlier today, Anne was like, can I take a look at your notes? Because she forgot her notebook and she wanted to make sure she remembered everything and I was like yeah and I was like I don't know what I wrote because it's like some of the words are written over each other or it's like sideways or it's very sloppy and she could read everything perfectly I was like I don't know what that word is and she was like oh it's this and I was like oh she could read it perfectly all right so the movie was filmed in 2021 we're getting it three years later it's crazy because uh there was the strike everything that happened the delays it was shot before Barbie, which is very interesting to me to learn that because, you know, a lot of times you get a movie and you don't realize what it had to go through before it reaches the audience. So I thought that was really interesting. And uh, Matt G is in the live chat. Matt, thank you for hanging out at this uh, 1158 at night. This is very exciting to do a very, very late night stream. We're talking about Borderlands right now in the Lionsgate panel. So thanks for hanging out. Uh, oh, yeah, it was really funny because... Ariana Greenblatt and Eli Roth had a really fun back and forth banter with each other. And he was talking about how she asked him, what movie should I watch before we make this movie together? And he had some jokes for her. And I don't know if this is true. I don't know if this is a real thing, David, you might know, but he was saying you should watch Empire directed by Andy Warhol. And it's, if this is a real thing, or I don't know if you want to look it up, but it it's an eight hour film just of the Empire State Building. And so like he told her that as a joke and then it became an ongoing joke on set where they would just have it playing at all times. And like Jamie Lee Curtis would walk by and be like, why are we watching an eight hour stream of the Empire State Building? And it was just, I think that's hilarious that something like that, if that's real, exists. And then that it became such a huge, I don't know, like joke throughout the making of the film. Uh, Joshua Gonzalez says, hey, Taylor. Hey, Joshua, thank you for hanging out and joining me. So yeah, Ariana Greenblatt and Eli Roth were talking about how they spoke in code. It was funny, she, I forgot, I didn't write it down, but she said basically, he would say like, can you be a little bit more this and a little less this? And like, so for example, because I, I don't remember what she said exactly, but it was like, can you be a little bit more flowers and a little bit less lamp? And it was like, what? And she was like, I know exactly what he meant. And everyone else thought uh, they were crazy. So I think that's really sweet that they have like this fun coded back and forth. Um, Matt G says it's 8 a.m. in the UK. Oh, well, that's good. Good morning. <laughs> it's about to be midnight here. So yeah, you're eight hours ahead. That's, that's, oh yeah, I forgot. A bunch of my friends live in the UK. <laughs> I knew there was an eight hour difference, but yeah, good morning. And uh, Matt is uh, intrigued by Borderlands. Yeah, okay, so a lot of people agree with you, Matt, that the first trailer just looked okay. But the footage they showed today, and then also them being on stage and seeing the chemistry. I know he's the director, uh, but just seeing their chemistry and then also that pre-recorded video with Jamie Lee Curtis, Kate Blanchett, um, Jack Black, and Kevin Hart. I think if their chemistry from what we saw today translates on screen and then also just how fun it looks, I think it's gonna be pretty fun. Uh, they were also talking about how sometimes they would just be on set and they would be like, what should we do right now? And they were like, let's just stand around and waste money. And they would count the minutes as they went by and be like, that's $1,000, $2,000. And then it was funny because the head of Lionsgate or he was the head of distribution for Lionsgate. I forgot exactly who he was. He was like, are you sure this is the story you want to be telling right now? So I thought that was hilarious that they were talking about wasting money and just like hanging out on set. 
All right, so next they went into The Crow, which comes out on August 23rd. And they were talking about how it has themes of eternal love, loss, heaven, hell, and how these themes resonate to this day. He was talking about how it's vastly different in both the look and the feel from the original, and it's not going to complete with or take away anything from the original film. And I think that's really cool that he said that because I know there are a lot of people out there who think um, that it shouldn't be touched, that the original one's a classic, and also since he passed away uh, making the film, that it people were upset that they were remaking it. But I think when people see the footage that they showed us... And when you hear people who work on it talk about how it's just a completely different film, uh, I think people are going to enjoy it. I am very excited for it. The footage was great. It was very gory, very bloody, very action heavy. Uh, I, I thought it was great. And um, I don't know what that word even says. Oh, I wrote down two specific things I wanted to mention about the footage because I don't know. I haven't had a chance to check if it's out. But there's a scene that takes place in a car and uh, Bill Skarsgård, who plays the crow, shoots a guy in the cheek and the bullet goes through the cheeks. I thought that was great. And then there was another scene that I specifically wrote down for Chris Carr because there was eye violence in this footage where Bill has a sword or a knife, like a, I think it's like a long sword sticking out of his chest and he leans forward and the guy who he has pinned down on the floor, the sword goes into his eye. I thought it was a great shot, but I know Chris will not not enjoy that. The Multiverse Show says, hello, I'm here. Thank you uh, for joining me. It's now midnight where I am, so good morning. This is this is fun. I like this. I do have to be up at like, like 7, because <laughs> early tomorrow is Paramount, and then there's a luncheon with uh, John M. Chu, who is the director of Upcoming Wicked Part 1 and 2. And then what else is there tomorrow? Disney's doing a presentation. There's an awards ceremony, and there's the after party, which the after party on the final night gets crazy, or at least I, I get crazy. So there was a movie announced today that I didn't know existed before today uh, called Never Let Go, and it stars uh, Halle Berry. This comes out on September 27th. And they used my least favorite phrase in the world uh, to describe it. They said it was elevated horror. I don't like that. I just just call it horror. <laughs> I just think elevated horror, when people first started talking about it, was fun. But then it got overused, and I'm ready to let that phrase go. <laughs> uh, but it's from the director of The Hills Have Eyes and Crawl, which, David, do you remember watching Crawl, the movie with the alligators? That one was really, really fun. So I think this movie looks great. I don't know if this trailer's out yet, but... Basically, Halle Berry plays a mother, and she has two sons, and I believe she said that they are played by a nine-year-old and a ten-year-old. They play twins in the movie, I think age ten, and there's ropes that connect them to the house, and the three of them can leave the house as long as they're connected by this rope, but as soon as the rope isn't there, they said one touch without the rope is all it takes, and then something comes and gets you. So I thought that was really interesting. And uh, after this presentation, I went to lunch at the Cheesecake Factory with uh, Anne and Ray and John Campia, and we were talking about it. And we all have our theories. I think we all had different theories about what we think, if we think Halle Berry's character is crazy and it's all in her head, or if she's purposely doing this, um, or if it's true. Because maybe, maybe none of this is true and it's all in her head, or she's tricking her kids. But I thought it was really interesting. And then it's from the producers of Stranger Things, which I thought was great. And um, they talked about how it puts doubt in the children's mind and it makes you think uh, if it's safe to leave the home or if you can trust the mom or what that rope is all about. So I think it's really cool. It's mystery, it's horror, it's Halle Berry. So I think that's great. They brought out Halle Berry on stage. She looked, of course, stunning. And it's crazy because I haven't seen her in a long time. And she has not aged a day. She looks so good. And she was just very grateful to be there, very excited to... She said, it's so good to be here talking about movies in the cinema. So she was very excited to be talking about a theatrical release at CinemaCon with everybody. And she was asked, uh, what was it about Never Let Me Go that made you want to sign on for this? And she said she is a uh, adrenaline junkie 
and she was talking about like she wants to you know make the jumps higher the bungee cords shorter like she's addicted to that kind of stuff and she said that the shining is one of her favorite films as a child <laughs> so that, that was really funny and uh she said she's never seen this world before on screen or read it in a book and that when she read the script she was just so drawn to it and she said um that she was able to draw a lot on the fact that she's a mother uh, for this film. So I thought that was really interesting. And I can't wait to see it. And I love Halle Berry. I love this type of movie where you go into it. I hope I'm. My main concern is they're going to release more trailers and more TV spots. And by the time the movie comes out, the mystery will be out. So I'm hoping they don't spoil it in the marketing and they let us as an audience experience for the first time when we watch it. Uh, it's a creepy environment, and let's see. What did I write here? Um, oh, she was talking about how in that house, so in the movie, uh, they didn't have food, electricity. Her character was eating raw uh, frogs and bugs. And what was interesting, she made a joke, but uh, she said that she did some method acting, and she said she learned how to really skin a squirrel while making this movie. So, oh, no thank you. <laughs> And uh, so she was asked, how much did being a mother uh, influence your performance? And she said she's been a mother for 16 years now and that she's uh, wildly excited to play a mother in this movie. And she was talking about how parents always say, like, they would, you know, take a bullet for their kid or they would do anything for their kid to protect them. And that in this film, it's really going to push that and see what limits you would pass to protect your kids. And I thought that was, yeah, really interesting. Um, then she thanked Lionsgate because she was saying that because of Lionsgate and their partnership, that's what got her her first Oscar. And he told her that uh, she will always have a seat at their table. And she was just so appreciative that Lionsgate started her career. So I thought that was really sweet. Okay, so the next movie they talked about I wrote um, the name of the movie, the release date, and the director. It's called The Best Christmas Pageant Ever. It comes out November 8th, and it's directed by Dallas Jenkins. I don't know anything about it. It's just um, a Christmas movie. I was hanging out with uh, John during his live stream, and he, he put it best when he said it is like a Hallmark movie. Uh, the, next, <laughs> I don't really have anything to say about it. It, it just looks very... Why? That's what I want to know. Uh, next up, though, The Killer's Game. So this stars uh, Dave Batista, Sofia Batella, Terry Crews, Ben Kingsley, and it reunites Dave with uh, Palm Clemente from Guardians of the Galaxy. So Drax and Mantis are together again. And this one is crazy. I thought I knew what I was getting uh, when it started the trailer and when they started showing us the footage. Sorry. My voice already. Um, oh, how long did we wait for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie? Okay, uh, multiverse show. I'll get to that. I, I have that. Um, I have that in my notes. I haven't gotten to that yet. And uh, oops, I scrolled away. Okay. So this trailer was very bloody, very violent. Uh, basically, Dave Batista is a like hitman and he is told he's going to die he goes to the doctors they say you know you only have days to live so he goes to palm's character and says go ahead and put a hit out on me and get the money um only to get a call like after the fact saying uh they were wrong and that he's not dying so then he wants to cancel the hit on him and of course no one wants to so it's kind of him uh fighting off all these bounty hunters for him it looks like a lot of fun. And I thought it was interesting because I thought I knew what to expect. I thought it was just going to be that part. He's dying. There's a hit on him. But then to find out, oh, no, I'm not dying. Oh, wait, it's too late to do anything about this. I thought that was really funny. Uh, hello, Ken, in the live chat. Thank you for joining me at 12.10 in the morning. We're doing it, guys. We're doing it. 12.10. I got to be up in six hours and 50 minutes. But who cares? It's, it's Vegas. It's the last day. Oh, my God. Now that it's midnight, it's the last day today. That's sad. All right, so next up was a Mark Wahlberg film called Flight Risk. And this movie looks nuts. Uh, I am very excited for it. It's about a dangerous psychopath on a plane. 
It was called A Thrill Ride. Uh, it has Topher Grace, Mark Wahlberg, and it's about... I don't want to spoil anything. I'm going to try and keep it like vague without spoiling anything, but basically uh, there is someone on a plane being transported and not everything is as it seems and it turns out that one of the people on there is impersonating someone and uh, it looks like it could be a single location film based on the footage they showed us but maybe by the time a full trailer comes out and we see more uh, that won't be the case but it looks as of right now it looks like a yeah like a single location film it looks very fun the, it's funny because okay there's a reveal about someone you know impersonating someone and not being who they say they are but there's also a big reveal that they knock his hat off and he's bald and that like blew my mind well he's not bald what's it called when you just have the hair on the sides but you have the the middles all bald that's what he had and uh that was shocking to me <laughs> but no one talked about that no one mentioned it and i was like wait you guys i've never seen Mark Wahlberg with like a big bald <laughs> it was interesting uh, after that was Shadow Force, uh, and the, the slogan for that was Family Over Everything. It stars Kerry Washington, uh, Mark Strong, Divine Joy Randolph, which was nice because when they were talking about it, they, they were so happy to call her uh, Oscar winner, uh, Divine Joy Randolph, which is very fun because imagine being able to call your friend Oscar winner, you know? That's very exciting. Uh, let's see, we have someone in the live chat saying, did Lionsgate mention if there will be more Hunger Game movies? They didn't, but they also kind of alluded to it. They didn't announce anything, but they were talking about the success of their films from 2023 and how they're going to continue to build on those worlds and those franchises. And they mentioned the Hunger Games in that sentence. So to me, that sounds like they're going to do more in the world of Hunger Games, but they didn't specifically say anything about what it would be or when it would be or anything like that but it, it seems like that's something they're working on all right so up next was good fortune this was probably the funniest thing that happened all day so it stars seth rogan aziz ansari kiana reeves kiki palmer sandra oh uh it's written and directed by aziz ansari and he came out on stage and was making jokes that i will not say on the internet but he was so funny and they gave us an extended first look at it and uh, you guys it it's so funny okay so keanu reeves plays like a guardian angel named gabriel right and he is tasked i'm just gonna chill for a sec just in case all right now it's his excellent connection so if someone in the live chat could just let me know if it's frozen or if it's really excellent <laughs> It's one of the other. How's it looking? It looks good? Okay. Sorry about that. I will continue. So basically, Seth Rogen's a rich guy. Um, Aziz is down on his luck and is doing like uh, tasks that he doesn't want to do. Keanu Reeves uh, switches their, their roles and their positions. And then later in the trailer... The trailer was pretty long because it gave a lot of the details, but I don't think it showed the whole movie. I thought it was just laying the groundwork for what this film is. Uh, he switches it to where Aziz is the rich one and then Seth Rogen is kind of like getting his drinks and cleaning his house and stuff like that. And uh, it was really funny because then at one point he makes it so Seth Rogen's character remembers the truth. And because of that, Sandra Oh comes and takes Keanu Reeves' wings away, the angel's wings away. So it's I know it's kind of hard to explain, but the premise is very interesting. It's not like anything I've ever seen and it, it looks really fun. And that cast, too, is so fun to to see. You know, okay, so I wrote this down. Let me see where I put it. Um, oh, yeah, it was funny because this this um, presentation was really early in the morning. It was like, at, I want to say like 8 or 9 a.m. And so Aziz Ansari thanked all of the exhibitors that left the strip club to come to <laughs> the presentation. And I thought that was really funny. Uh, but something that was really interesting to me. So Aziz talked about how Keanu Reeves did for John Wick's films he did what did, what else did he mention he mentioned speed he mentioned matrix he mentioned like all these action movies that keanu reeves has done and he says he's never been hurt like uh sent to the hospital or injured uh severely but then he said that keanu reeves making this film tricked on a rug and what did, what was it fractured his kneecap 
and uh, they showed a picture of him with like a like a, a bandage wrap on his knee. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe. It wasn't a stunt, it wasn't something crazy. He tripped and fell. And he does all these, you know, John Wick films where he's doing these crazy stunts. So that's really sad, but he's okay now. Um, Aziz was talking about how this movie covers something that a lot of people are dealing with and struggling with, but that no one is really talking about. And I thought that was an interesting way to look at this. He said that he did a lot of interviews with gig workers because that's kind of what the character is, a gig worker. I want to say it's like a task, task rabbit. Is that it? There's some app where you can hire someone to do something and there's like all these different tasks you can do. Uh, Peter Cunnington is in the live chat. Fernando Rodriguez is in the live chat. Thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate this. Uh, and then let's see, where did we go from there? So from there we went to John Wick presents ballerina. This comes out on my birthday. This comes out on June 6th, but of 2025 and it froze. Okay. It's back. So June 6th, 2025, my birthday, but of next year, that's, that's crazy to think it's over a year away. And I am very much looking forward to this film. Damn, is it frozen again? Do you have it pulled up? On my end, it's just frozen. It's not frozen? Well, then my computer's tripping. So Ballerina's set between John Wick 3 and 4, which is fun because, uh, well, spoiler if you have not seen John Wick 4, but, but he's alive in this film. So that takes away the question of what happens beyond John Wick 4. And then it was cool because of when it was shot, Lance Reddick is also in it. What? Damn. Why do you think that is? Well, sorry guys, sorry if it keeps glitching and lagging. I don't even, I'm gonna just disconnect my phone from the Wi-Fi for a bit too. I got an Airbnb because uh, I figured that would be better Wi-Fi than trying to stream in a hotel room. But joke's on me because it keeps freezing. What do I do? I don't even have anything open. Huh. Yeah, it's just frozen on my end again. Do you think I should just keep going and hope it works? Okay, I'm going to just keep going. So, uh, looks great. Ballerina looks great. The action sequences are great. They push it a year because they're adding a lot more set pieces to it, which I thought was great. It does show Keanu Reeves as John Wick at the end of the trailer. I thought that was great. Um, Ana de Armas' character asks John Wick, how do I do what you're doing? And he says, it looks like you already are. So I thought that was a great line. What? Oh, I thought you were gonna tell me it's frozen, it's frozen again. All right, Peter Cunnington in the live chat is saying, I'm back and it's good for now. Let's hope. I kind of want to refresh my window, but I don't. I don't know what that will do. I. I. I'm scared to do that. <laughs> Ugh, this sucks because I'm only like halfway through with this stuff. All right. So then, uh, the last thing that Lionsgate did was they showed us a look at Michael, the Michael Jackson biopic that's coming out. Uh, it's from the people who did Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, The Departed, Argo. And yeah, so it's the first look. It's only, they said it's only about halfway through production. And the Michael biopic, it features over 30 songs. And they said that the movie will get into all of it, the professional life, the personal life, the drama, the controversy. I thought it was really good. Oh, now what is this shit? I got a warning message on my thing. I don't know, I don't know. But uh, it looks great. There's two actors that play Michael Jackson, which I didn't know, because there's the little kid version when he was in the Jackson 5, which makes sense, and then they have the adult version of Michael Jackson, so I thought that was cool that it showed the two of them. Both of them look great. The, the main guy has so much charisma and energy and just, yeah, high energy performances from him. Do you think I should just refresh my browser really quick? I'm gonna try it. Oof, scared. Let's see. Okay, I think that fixed it actually. 
Okay, so now I will cover what Universal and Focus features went on. Uh, their presentation was, I think, at 4 p.m., and it was really good. Uh, it started out with a Christopher Nolan thank you video where he thanked everyone for the support of Oppenheimer last year. And uh, they talked about how they have 29 films coming out this year between DreamWorks, Universal, Focus Features, and I keep getting errors saying that there's not enough to do smooth streaming. What does it look like on your phone? Well, I don't want to keep going if it's, if it's not working. Okay. So they talked about how Universal is going to be the international distributor for Michael. So it'll be Lionsgate in the US and internationally it will be Universal. And then they brought out the head of Illumination. He's the founder and the CEO, Chris Melandrandi. And I think that's how you say it. Uh, they started off by showing us an extended look at Despicable Me 4, which will be coming out July 4th weekend. It was maybe like a seven or eight minute scene. And they showed us like the whole the whole scene where they're breaking into a lair and they have to fight a honey badger. And I thought that was really, really funny. And uh, it just looks great. I am excited. I can't believe this is already the fourth Despicable Me film. But then what's cool too is like, is like we also have the Minions spinoffs. So it's just, yeah, this franchise just keeps going and going. It's like the Energizer Bunny. And I am excited to get another uh, Despicable Me film. I think that'll be really fun. And I'm just opening the stream on my phone because on my end, I haven't moved in like three minutes. So the director of Despicable Me 4 is the director of the first two films. And some of the actors that will be joining the returning cast will be Will Ferrell, Stephen Colbert, Joey King. Uh, it just sounds like a really fun lineup of voice actors. And, okay, so I have the stream pulled up on my phone, and it looks perfectly fine on my phone. So we'll see. We'll see about that. All right, so Pharrell is coming back to do the soundtrack, which is great because he's been doing the, the Despicable Me films, I think, since the beginning. And he has that song, Happy, that went crazy, crazy viral. And uh, I'm excited to hear what he brings to this film. And uh, the sequence showed two new characters. One is Poppy, who is voiced by Joey King, and the other one was Gru Jr., who's their son, and he was very cute. And then they went on to talk about Twisters, and uh, director Lee Isaac Chung uh, spoke about it, and it was his first CinemaCon. But what was really funny, so he was talking about how basically Steven Spielberg is like the biggest tornado fan. And if you ever have put a video of a tornado on YouTube, he said Steven Spielberg has watched it. And congratulations on that. And I just want to check the stream on my phone because on my phone it's just a black screen. <laughs> what is it on yours? Weird. I don't know. All these glitches tonight. All right, so what was really fun was they brought out Daisy Edgar Jones, Glenn Powell, Anthony Ramos to talk about Twisters. And they were talking about how they had to be dunked in water tanks and have ice and trash thrown at them. And they were dragged by wires and pelted with wind and all these like different things they had to go through to make this movie. But they were like, well, we could tell you or we could show you. So then they brought out these giant fans and aimed them at the actors and had leaves blowing at them and squirted them with water. It was really fun. They also had an inflatable cow on stage. <clears throat> I thought that was really cool. And they just had really good chemistry on set. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to Twisters. Then they did a horror reel, and this, this was very exciting for me. They did a horror reel where they talked about some of the films that have come out from them over the years and they focused on Five Nights at Freddy's, Megan, Us, Nope, Halloween, The Black Phone, Abigail, Invisible Man, Happy Death Day. And they talked about some upcoming horror films. It's that time of the night <clears throat> where my voice starts to go. <clears throat> 
They talked about uh, how there's going to be officially a sequel to Five Nights at Freddy's. That was the first time they officially announced it was tonight. And they were, were talking a little bit about how there will be uh, a Megan sequel. So I'm very excited for a Megan sequel. I think that will be very fun. And uh, there's a few other things. But you know what? I think just to be safe because on my end, on my computer and on my phone, it is just stuck. I will end there for now. <clears throat> and tomorrow I will make sure the Wi-Fi is reset before I stream. And the goal for tomorrow is uh, if anyone has any questions about anything that I didn't get to cover today, I will cover it tomorrow night. And hopefully things go smoother tomorrow because last night there were glitches and technical difficulties. Tonight there were glitches and technical difficulties. But I appreciate you guys joining me. It's currently 1230 in the morning too. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I'm sorry about this. Hopefully tomorrow works out better. Uh, but check out the other content that I have up from today too. I have a video of Anne, Ray, and I on the trade show floor, which was very fun. And I have a review of the new neon film, Babes, which I thought was hilarious. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye. <laughs>